we've talked about what an electron group is. Let's talk about electron geometry. And electron geometry is the shape of the electron groups around a central atom. So uh, let's start with two electron groups around the central atom. And the electron geometry will be called linear. And the bond angle will be 180 degrees. And I think this will make a lot of sense once we go through some examples, um, one of which we've seen right here, HCN, which we just talked about. Um, but it's a good idea to always associate these two things together, linear and 180 degrees. Basically memorize them, um, although we'll be able to figure it out too. But I, I like, anyway, I hopefully you get the idea. So here's HCN. HCN is going to have its Lewis structure. And what I said before was being able to draw these Lewis structures and to determine the shape is an important skill to have. So we're assuming that you know how to do Lewis structures right now. Now that we have the Lewis structure, we can see that around the central atom there are two electron groups total. So that's what I mean by two electron groups around the central atom. And the shape of this, well, um, here's the bond angle, 180 degrees. And that's basically like saying, so if I have two things that are as far apart as possible, if I have two things that are as far apart as possible, they will be 180 degrees apart. So as soon as they go closer, they'll be less than 180, and then they'll repel. Remember the electron groups, so let's say, well, this the single bond, and this the triple bond, will repel, and then they go a little, oh, nope, repel, oop, nope, repel. And so they stay 180 degrees apart. That is as far apart as they can be, and still be attached to each other around the central atom, right? They are still attached to each other. And so for this, the shape is very easy to draw because it, the shape is basically the Lewis structure. But that won't always be the case. But if I, I can and I will ask you to draw the shape, you just want to draw it like this. And it's true for shapes, well, yeah. Uh, you could draw the shape like this, you could draw the shape like this, just showing the atoms. The key thing when you draw the shape is that you draw, you should be able to see the bond angle, and sometimes I will ask you to do it as well. Um, and while we're here, I didn't think about this before, but we might as well do some dipoles because I will typically ask for dipoles as well. And for dipoles, we need our periodic table and our trend in electronegativity. We can see that when you go from nitrogen to carbon, the electronegativity decreases. So nitrogen is more electronegative. So we can draw a dipole right here. That's a dipole arrow, as we've talked about. And uh, one key point that I've mentioned, but it's worth mentioning again, so we will only draw dipoles if they exist next to bonds. We will not draw them next to, um, sorry, I have to draw this correctly again if I'm going to draw a dipole next to it. Um, then we know that hydrogen is the least electronegative nonmetal. So this will be positive. And if we were to think, oh, we can't do dipoles yet. We haven't done dipoles yet. Yeah, we have. We've done dipoles. We'll talk about um, net molecular dipoles coming up. But these two dipoles are both pointing to the right. All right. Now let's go on to three electron groups. Three electron groups around the central atom. The electron geometry is trigonal planar. And the bond angle is 120 degrees. And a good example of this is going to be ozone, O3. Its Lewis structure would be 
O, O, O. And it will turn out that there will be a double bond on one side, a single bond on the other side, and a pair of electrons on the oxygen. And like I said, a single bond is one electron group, a pair of electrons is one electron group, and a double bond is a third electron group. There are three electron groups around the central atom. And we can say a couple things about this shape. One is, um, well, it'll be a 120 degrees, and so if I ask you to draw the shape, it'll look like this. So put a pair of electrons anywhere, but how about right there? Uh, it looks like somebody's surprised there. And then approximately 120 degrees. Oop, I flipped my sides there, but that's okay. Go ahead and uh, draw this as approximately 120 degrees. And then I will ask you to do one other thing with this. And this seems like a good time to talk about it. Do you see this lone pair? So this lone pair is actually more a, a source of more negative charge. So let's see this. Acts more negative. than um, any bond and it actually pushes these two slightly closer together so it pushes bonds away meaning that whenever there's a lone pair of electrons we won't give the answer 120 degrees we will give the answer less than 120 degrees, meaning the O, O, O bond angle is less than 120 degrees. Um, now let's do a second example. Oop. This example is going to be sulfur trioxide, SO3. If we were to draw the Lewis structure for this, well, sorry, I already drew it in its shape. Um, we would uh, draw it, all right, let me start over. So Lewis structure does not show shape. One more time. Lewis structure does not show shape. It can, but it does not have to, so I will make sure that it does not show shape. We will see that our best Lewis structure here is single, double, single bond. And uh, that means there are one, two, three electron groups around the central atom, the sulfur. And so now when I draw it with this shape, well, I'm sort of going to draw this again, but now when there's no electron pairs, when there's all atoms, all of these bond angles are a perfect 120 degrees. And sometimes you'll see for, uh, say, ozone here with a pair of electrons, they actually give you a number. I will not ask you to know the number. All I will ask you to know is that when there's a pair of electrons, it's less than the ideal bond angle. When it's all atoms, it's perfectly that bond angle, 120 degrees. I think we made it to that example. I did anyway. Whew, barely, though. Now our last number of electron groups that we will deal with in this course is four electron groups. The electron geometry here is called tetrahedral. And the bond angle is 109.5 degrees. And this 
So uh, for those of you playing along at home, you know that uh, they with two electron groups and 360 degrees, we cut 360 divided by two and we got 180. For three electron groups, 360 divided by 120, why three was 120. And so 360 divided by four is 90, and this is a different number. And so a couple notes here before we even draw it. So uh, this shape is not flat. The other two are. This shape is not flat. And we will have to show that in our drawings. First though, for CH4, let's do the Lewis structure. If we do the Lewis structure for CH4, we get this Lewis structure here. We see that around the central atom, there are one, two, three, four electron groups, so we're in the right place. So our shape is called tetrahedral, and um, our uh, drawing of it, and this is where I'm gonna be a real stickler. Whenever I ask you to draw a shape, and that shape is tetrahedral, there is only one way to draw it that will get you any points in this class, and it must be exact. Lots of other people will draw it other ways and give you credit for it, but not me. So let me show you what I mean. So here's carbon. So carbon has four things around it. One of them is straight up, and one of them is angled down into the side, and they're both lines. They're both bonds, just like we've seen before. But now there's going to be two other ones. And this is what's called an out wedge. And let me actually draw the H here so far. There we go. So this is called an out wedge. And that's because it's coming out at you. And so you see how this pen gets slightly bigger as it comes towards you. This bond is getting slightly, well, it's an exaggerated perspective. It's getting bigger as it comes towards you and out of the page. So this H is actually sticking, you know, out like that, out of the page. All right, and it's not sticking straight up, it's sticking down and out. Now the other one is going to be going back into the page, and as things go back into the page, as they get farther away, they get smaller, they also get wider. And that is a series of angled dashed lines pointing down, and then there's your other H. And so just to be clear, if I draw a dashed line through the center of my carbon, three of them must be angled down. And so what I will do is when I'm grading your shapes, I will draw, I will put a piece of paper here. And if I can see all three of these H's, then I will give you points. And I'm sorry to be such a stickler, but the reason I'm such a stickler about this is because I'm trying to develop a chemistry method for how we draw a shape and uh, of three-dimensional objects in a two-dimensional page. And so this is a formalism that you'll see all over the place. And in particular, there are a lot of these out and back wedges. If you've ever uh, unscrolled the long um, piece of paper that comes with your um, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, so uh, I have, and if you look inside there, there's usually a picture, every time I've been there, there has been, of the molecule that includes some of these out and back wedges, and you can start to understand the shapes of those molecules, and shape is very important for pharmaceuticals. All right, so, um, oh, and bond angles. So each of these bond angles is 109.5 degrees. Same thing here as we talked about before. All of these are atoms, so it's a perfect 109.5. We are about to see some differences. And those are going to be for two really important molecules, ammonia and water. For ammonia, if we draw the Lewis structure,
we will find that it has four electron groups. So the electron geometry is tetrahedral. If I ask you to draw the shape of an ammonia molecule, we would do, um, well, technically the pair of electrons and the H's can go anywhere. Uh, I'm gonna put my pair of electrons up top that are gonna fill this up spot. Then I have my three other H's that are going to be going down and to the side. There's my three spots. And again, as long as they go down, well, and I guess one has to go to one side and the other two have to go down into the other side. There is the shape of, of the ammonia molecule. And these bond angles are less than 109.5. How much less? Some people will say, uh, I am not concerned about that. And when you do the homework, you'll see there will be an option for what is the bond angle for ammonia? And you will have an option of 109.5, and that is not the right answer. It is less than 109.5. Now, let's do H2O. And for H2O, we start with our Lewis structure. Lewis structure shows all bonds and pairs of electrons. The shape, well, let's see, one, two, three, four. Our electron geometry is again tetrahedral. And this time we have four spots here. And there's a couple different ways you can draw water uh, that are okay in the tetrahedral shape. So here's my O. You can do one of them here and one of them here with an H and an H down there like that. That's fun, that's fine. It's a little hard to see though, and so typically when we do it, we will typically, well, I think I've drawn this before you before. You can draw it like that, and you can draw it with two pairs of electrons down there. That is a fine way to draw water. In fact, when we talk about hydrogen bonding, that is exactly how you're gonna draw it. You're gonna note that the bond angle here is less than 109.5. And, um, and so, so when I ask you to draw a tetrahedral, it's probably gonna be something that has four atoms attached. And so the, you can get all of the positions very nicely here. This one works pretty well, but when you start to get two pairs of electrons, it's almost better to just do it like this. And so this is, a good way to draw water for tetrahedral.